So last time we talked about how fiction is stories. It's made up. It can be totally imaginary or it can be more realistic, but it's always made up. And today we're going to talk about the characters. So one thing that stories always have is characters. And sometimes those characters are incredibly dull, but hopefully not very often. They're usually pretty interesting. But we're going to talk about what makes them interesting. So we're going to use this book as an example. It's called Miss Rumpheus. It was written and illustrated by Barbara Cooney. So far, both of our books have been written and illustrated by the same person. So look at that cover. Maybe you've seen this one before, maybe not. It shows kind of an older woman wearing kind of a, a hooded outfit. She's by some tall purple-ish flowers out in nature. Start thinking, what on earth is this a book about? If you're someone who loves to only read books about sports or monster trucks, this isn't your book. But it's a good book nonetheless. She's a very interesting person. And I want you to pay attention to how the author makes her seem interesting. The author actually is related to her. Also, we're only going to read half of the book today. So there will be a cliffhanger. Miss Rumpheus. Does anyone know what type of flowers those are? We'll find out. To St. Nicholas, patron saint of children, sailors, and maidens. The lupine lady lives in a small house overlooking the sea. In between the rocks around her house grow blue and purple and rose-colored flowers. The lupine lady is little and old, but she has not always been that way. I know. She is my great aunt, and she told me so. Once upon a time, she was a little girl named Alice, who lived in a city by the sea. From the front stoop, she could see the wharves and the bristling masts of tall ships. Many years ago, her grandfather had come to America on a large sailing ship. There she is. Now he worked in the shop at the bottom of the house, making figureheads for the prows of ships and carving Indians out of wood to put in front of cigar stores. For Alice's grandfather was an artist. He painted pictures, too, of sailing ships and places across the sea. When he was very busy, Alice helped him put in the skies. There she is helping to paint the skies. You can see on the front of that ship a carved figure and he would carve those. Pretty cool. In the evening, Alice sat on her grandfather's knee and listened to his stories of faraway places. When he had finished, Alice would say, When I grow up, I too will go to faraway places, and when I grow old, I too will live beside the sea. That is all very well, little Alice, said her grandfather, but is, there is a third thing you must do. What is that? said Alice. You must do something to make the world more beautiful, said her grandfather. All right, said Alice, but she did not know what that could be. In the meantime, Alice got up and washed her face and ate porridge for breakfast. She went to school and came home and did her homework, and pretty soon she was grown up. Then my great aunt Alice set out to do the three things she had told her grandfather she was going to do. She left home and went to live in another city far from the sea and the salt air. There she worked in a library, dusting books and keeping them from getting mixed up and helping people find the ones they wanted. Some of the books told her about faraway places. People called her Miss Rumpheus now. There she is in the library. There she is walking home. It's a nice library. Sometimes she went to the conservatory in the middle of the park. When she stepped inside on a wintry day, the warm, moist air trapped itself around her, and the sweet smell of jasmine filled her nose. This is almost like a tropical isle, said Miss Rumpheus, but not quite. And remember, a conservatory is like a, an indoor greenhouse. They have some of those over by Como Zoo in St. Paul. They look almost like glass castles 
Very nice to go to on a cold day. So Miss Rumpheus went to a real tropical island where people kept cockatoos and monkeys as pets. She walked on long beaches, picking up beautiful shells. One day she met the Bapa Raja, king of a fishing village. You must be tired, he said. Come into my house and rest. So Miss Rumpheus went in and met the Bapa Raja's wife. The Bapa Raja himself fetched a green coconut and cut a slice off the top so that Miss Rumpheus could drink the coconut water inside. Before she left, the Baparaha gave her a beautiful mother-of-pearl shell on which he had painted a bird of paradise, and the words, You will always remain in my heart. You will always remain in mine, too, said Miss Rumpheus. Quite a little trip. My great aunt, Al, aunt, my great aunt Miss Alice Rumpheus climbed tall mountains where the snow never melted. She went through jungles and across deserts. She saw lions playing and kangaroos jumping. And everywhere she made friends she would never forget. Finally, she came back to the land of the lotus eaters. And there, getting off a camel, she hurt her back. What a foolish thing to do, said Miss Rumpheus. Well, I have certainly seen faraway places. Maybe it is time to find my place by the sea. And it was. And she did. There she is, mountain climbing. There she is, riding a camel. From the porch of her new house, Miss Rumpheus watched the sun come up. She watched it cross the heavens and sparkle on the water, and she saw it set in glory in the evening. She started a little garden among the rocks that surrounded her house, and she planted a few flower seeds in the stony ground. Miss Rumpheus was almost perfectly happy. But there is still one more thing I have to do, she said. I have to do something to make the world more beautiful. But what? The world is already pretty nice, she thought, looking out over the ocean. There's your house. And there's the stopping point. We're halfway through the book, and next time we will finish the book. So what makes Miss Rumpheus Alice interesting? Is it the things that she does? Is it the way the author describes them? Or do you not find her interesting at all? Well, I certainly do. Your goal today is to think of somebody who you find interesting. It could be based on a real person who you find interesting. It could be based on somebody you make up using your imagination. You know what? I'll put my thinking cap on. Maybe that'll help me think. I, that's not my thinking. Sorry. That's my Batman mask. My cowl. Okay. I don't have my thinking cap handy. But maybe you do. Think of somebody interesting, or you could take a person based on a real person and make them more interesting. And how you make them more interesting is totally up to you. If you need inspiration, think about books you've read. Think about interesting characters and what makes them interesting. So you are going to write fiction every day from now on. You're going to be writing fiction. What it is is your choice. But today I want you to try to come up with interesting characters or take a character you have and find a way to make them more interesting. Have fun. Happy writing.